Have you ever just wanted to start your life with a clean slate? Like you made a big mistake and you just want to hit a redo button and pretend like it never happened. If you promise not to judge me, I'll tell you the story of how I tried to cover up my own son. I know you're probably thinking I'm stupid and selfish, but just hear me out. I didn't want to let one little slip up ruin my life, you know? Pregnancy is a scary thing when you're just 18. Please just give me a chance to explain myself. I'm really not a horrible person. Before I get into that though, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you do, you'll get five years of good fortune, trust me. I never thought I had a lot of luck, to be honest. My mother was very poor and we lived in a really rundown neighborhood. I always told myself I'd do better and become super rich one day. I'd never have to worry about finding my next meal or not having a roof over my head. I worked very hard in school. I was top of my class and super smart, but I don't think that was the reason I was so popular. I'm not trying to sound cocky, but I was pretty hot. I always got stopped in malls with modeling opportunities, but I turned down each and every one because I wanted to focus on school and get out of this horrible town. I never thought I would let anyone get in the way of my dreams, but I was wrong. During my junior year of high school, I had to get a job to start saving up for college. I worked at a frozen yogurt place, passing out samples in the front of the store. It wouldn't have been so bad, except the store owner made me dress up in an embarrassing uniform that looked like an ice cream cone. I went from being the prettiest person in the room to the loser people pointed and laughed at. I remember this one day in particular was very bad. One afternoon, a whole group of people from my class showed up to the shop. They weren't just any students. They were the most popular kids from the private academy. This super handsome guy approached me for some free samples. Even I was starstruck around him. He told me that I was kind of cute for an ice cream cone and I blushed. I could tell his compliment upset one of the girls he came with. Out of nowhere, she pushed me to the ground. There was frozen yogurt all over my face. Plus, the weight of the costume made it hard to get up. I was stuck struggling on my back like a turtle. Everyone was laughing. Everyone except the super handsome guy. He yelled at the girl for being so mean and helped me up. I'm sorry about them. How about you let me make it up to you? He asked. He told me that he wanted to take me on a date after my shift. The girl who pushed me was so mad, her and the rest of the group he came with stormed off on the spot. Just like that, I had fallen for him. He didn't seem to care that I was poor at all. He showered me with gifts and took me on extravagant vacations. He showed me the life that I wanted, the life that I had been working so hard for. He even covered my tuition fees and helped me apply to college. I thought this meant that he saw us being together forever, but I was mistaken. See, my life was about to be changed forever after eating a peanut butter sandwich. Well, to be more accurate, it was only after eating 20 of them did I realize something was up. See, I started craving them out of nowhere. At first, I thought I was just in the mood for it, but after a while, I felt like a disgusting monster. I decided to go to the doctor and see if I had a vitamin deficiency, but the reality was much worse. I was in trouble, like deep trouble. I was five months pregnant, I had hardly put on any weight or experienced any other symptoms. The doctor said I was just a rare case of a subtle pregnancy, but the baby was very happy and healthy. Did you know that it takes an African elephant nearly two years of pregnancy to make a baby? Well, human babies only need nine months, meaning I was less than a semester away from holding a baby in my arms. With graduation being only a month and a half away, I was freaking out. I decided to go and tell my boyfriend everything. It's funny how guys work sometimes. He accused me of trying to cheat my way into wealth. He said that his jerk could not afford a baby and it wasn't his problem. He threw $100 at me and told me to never talk to him again. He kicked me out of his house and that was that. I was so scared and hurt. I cried my whole way home. When I got there, my mom was waiting at the door. She had a huge smile on her face and was holding a huge envelope. 
I had gotten into the most prestigious school in the country. This was my dream, but it couldn't have come at a worse time. I cried and told my mom everything about the pregnancy and baby. She was so utterly disappointed. I thought you were going to be better than me, she lectured. Now you're going to be just like me. A poor single parent living in this rundown house with an ungrateful daughter or son. I tried to tell her that I could do both. Plenty of people have babies and go to college. But she just shook her head at me. She said I was too immature for this whole situation. And she was right. She could hardly look at me at all for the next few months. She didn't even come to my graduation. When it came time to give birth to my baby boy, I was completely and utterly alone. You know how they say after going through labor and holding your baby for the first time, you fall immediately in love? Well, I didn't. I don't want to say it, but I kind of hated that baby. I blamed him for my breakup and me not going to college. I could hardly look at him. I was in the hospital for a whole week, all by myself with the baby, and it just never got any better. I took a taxi home and brought the baby into the house. Surprisingly, my mom didn't seem too upset now that she saw her grandson. I would have said she seemed happier about him than I was. When it was time to go to bed, I brought the baby to my room. He was so loud and obnoxious. I didn't get any sleep. Around 3 a.m., I made a pretty rash decision that I kind of regret. I scribbled down a note to my mom explaining that she would be a better mother than me. Then I just packed a backpack of my clothes and left. Part of me did it because I thought I would be a horrible mother and my son would be better off like this. The other part of me, though, was a little selfish. It takes only seconds to get pregnant. It was so unfair that that was going to ruin my life, especially when I was the only one forced to deal with the consequences. I had the taxi drop me off at the airport and took the first flight to the university I got into. They were surprisingly understanding of my situation, or at least the situation I told them. I said we were so poor, we had no internet service, and our postal services were so bad. Since it wasn't my fault that the acceptance got lost in the mail, they took me in. I even got a spot in a dorm. All expenses paid. I know I probably should have felt guilty about abandoning my son, but... Didn't I deserve to enjoy everything I worked for? Years of hard studying and stupid side jobs had brought me to this elite university, full of elite peers. Between my amazing grades and my good looks, I once again became popular. My future was so bright. It was easy to forget about the sun I only saw for a couple of days. My mom never tried to contact me, or I never heard about it. Once again, I was alone, but I was excited. Since I had such a good scholarship, I didn't have to work at all. I didn't need to pay for our fancy dining hall or extravagant dormitories. I was living it up again. Of course, history does have a habit of repeating itself. One day in the library, I was so focused on reading, I crashed right into another person. He seemed a bit upset at first, but once he got a good look at how gorgeous I was, he softened rather fast. He was a little older than me, but super attractive. I actually mistook him as a student at first, but it turned out he was an economics professor. We started meeting up a few times after that, and he told me about his luxurious life. He traveled the world, had multiple mansions, and even owned a private jet. He made my ex-boyfriend look like a hobo in comparison. Now, I wouldn't call myself a gold digger, but how many people can honestly say they don't find rich attractive? I fell hard. Not just for the money, but he was just so charming. It was like a fairy tale. One day, our normally happy dates felt a little weird. He was upset, and it was obvious. Eventually, he told me some shocking news. He said that his ex-wife had died, leaving their daughter all alone. She was only three at the time but he didn't want to uproot her, meaning he was going to be moving there in the next month. The move was on the other side of the country, more than a couple of days with the car. What he told me next shook me to the core. I know we've only been dating a couple of months, he said, but I would love it if you just came with me. I think you would be an excellent mother. There was something about the way he said it that flooded me with guilt. He thought so highly of me. I wonder what he would think if he knew I abandoned my baby. In a horrible event of irony, he asked me if I would give up my dreams of school to be a mother. How many times would I face that? I decided to do it. I didn't even make it a year into school and I was already moving for some boy. 
I know what you're thinking. I'm an idiot. I think so too now, but it didn't seem so at first. We had got married at the city hall in his town and just hopped into married life, and it was great. It was actually kind of nice being a mom. I loved his daughter as though she was my own, and it started getting me thinking about my own son. It felt like I got what I wanted even though I quit school. I was rich and lived very comfortably, even if it wasn't my own success. I also got a taste of fame too, as my new husband was actually pretty famous and was always on TV. When you're famous, you get a lot of fans showing up at your house. Sometimes it's flattering, but most of the time it's scary. One in particular threatened to turn my life upside down. I mean, this incident was easily the worst. It was scarier than the time someone went through our garage for nail clippings. It was even scarier than the time some girl showed up dressed just like me. One day as my husband and I were sitting in the garden, the butler let us know someone was at the door for me. We both found it a little strange, but I assured him that everything was fine and I would get him if I needed him. Just like a ghost, my mother was standing in the frame with a young toddler in her hands. Turns out, my mom saw me on TV. She looked us up and decided to come here in person to confront me. When she saw what I was doing with my life, she decided she was done struggling to raise my baby when I was living so rich. She yelled at me for being spoiled and boy crazy. She said I was so selfish for abandoning my own son. How she was disappointed in me. She set my son on the ground and then just walked away. I yelled at her to come back and we could try to work something out, but she didn't even turn to me. The baby started crying and at that moment, my husband came into the living room. I heard all the shouting, is everything okay? He asked. Who is that? Who is this child? For a moment, I thought that this was the perfect time to come clean. I finally had a reason to relieve myself of this guilt and make right with my son. But then I started thinking about the consequences. What if he abandoned me too? I couldn't give up my life and dreams so easily. I told him that he was my sister's son and my sister had died in a freak accident. I begged him to let us keep the boy and he agreed. He said it might even be nice for our daughter to have a brother, even if he was just adopted. Being around my son was nothing like those first few days in the hospital. I actually really came to love him. He was my everything, and I told myself that from now on, I would make sure to make him my priority. If only I was good at sticking to my promises. From all the love I was showing to my son, my husband got very suspicious and confronted me about it a few days later. I told him he was just being paranoid, and then he threw an envelope at me. It was the maternity results. If you're not lying, I don't suppose you would be upset if I opened this, he asked angrily. I broke down in tears and threw the letter into the fire. He sighed for a moment and told me that he didn't need a letter because that was an answer enough. He gave me an ultimatum. I could send the boy away and we can start our own family, or my son and I could pack our bags. I loved my son with all my heart at this point. It felt as though fate had brought us back together just to rip him away again. What would I even do if I left? My mother wouldn't take me in. I couldn't support myself, let alone my son. With tears in my eyes and a heavy heart, I let him give my baby away. He never told me who he gave him to. He never wanted me to find out. It was a lot harder to just erase him from my mind this time. I got super depressed, but I thought a new baby would help. My husband and I tried over and over again, but no luck. I decided to go to a fertility doctor and they let me know I would never have a baby. I explained that I got pregnant once and they told me that the pregnancy was a miracle. I could try some medications, but the chances would always be slim. I felt horrible and if it couldn't get any worse, my husband seemed very disappointed in me. As my depression got worse, he spent more and more time on business trips or late nights at the office. Every time he would come home and immediately shower, I sometimes could smell perfume on his briefcase or work shirts. I wasn't an idiot. It was obvious he was cheating. I wanted to leave, but where would I go? Depression wasn't a good look for me. All the medicine I took to try to get pregnant made me fat and made my skin break out. Plus, I wasn't the young and fresh 19-year-old I was when we met. I always held on to hopes that he would get his child and we could both be happy. It did partially come true, but it ruined my life. See, one of his mistresses got pregnant. He sat me down to tell me this. I told him that we could work through it. I would raise the baby on my own, but he just shook his head. 
He told me that he had fallen in love with this young pregnant woman and that he would give me a month to move out because he was such a nice guy. Just like that, I was gone. I had no qualifications and had to get a job cleaning toilets at the motel I lived in. It was absolutely (laughs) awful. 20 years had passed since I was in college. I wasn't pretty enough anymore for a guy to sweep me off my feet. Instead, I was just this boring and bland old woman who had nothing to show for her life. I spent my nights at my job, my days sitting in my dirty, dimly lit room, searching through newspapers for any promising opportunity. Eventually, I found an ad for my dream job. At least, a dream job where I didn't need a degree. I showed up to the interview in my best outfit and even showed up 15 minutes early. You'll never guess who was sitting behind the desk when I walked in that door. The CEO of that company was young and handsome. With a warm smile, he asked me to come in and sit down. I was frozen in shock. Over a decade may have passed since I last saw him, but there was no mistaking. That was my son! His desk was full of family pictures and his wall was adorned with impressive degrees. My son had lived the life I always wanted. I wanted nothing more than to tell him everything. How I had been thinking about him for years and how I loved him. Part of me also teased the idea that telling him would bring me back into the life I loved and out of the motel I had been living in. I played out all the possible ways I could tell him. Wait for it, because you will never guess what my genius mind came up with. As I sat across from him and he asked if everything was okay, I said, nothing. He was happy and successful. I had put him through a hard life because of how selfish I was acting. I decided that once and for all, I would put him first. It was unfair for me to suddenly pop into his life again and ruin everything he'd ever known. So I just sat through the interview as though he was a stranger. I ended up getting the job and becoming his secretary. We grew surprisingly close over the course of my job. It's always tempting to let him know my secret, but I know it isn't the right thing to do. Or maybe that is just something I tell myself because I'm too afraid to step up. One day, he seemed really upset. I asked him what was wrong, and he started to cry. He told me how he was secretly adopted. His parents didn't want him to know, but he actually remembered a bit from his childhood. He remembered bouncing around as a toddler between houses, and he just pretended he forgot everything for his adoptive parents. They did so much for me. I think they would be hurt to know I was interested in my real mother, you know, he said. I asked him how he felt about it, and he gave me an answer that nearly moved me to tears. That deadbeat? he asked angrily. I hate her. He went on to say how she ruined his self-confidence, He spent so much time wondering how horrible she was to abandon him. Then his tone suddenly changed. I wonder if she regrets what she did. I asked him if he really wanted to know, and he hesitated. I don't know. He left the room shortly after. Today was not the right time, but I have finally gathered up my thoughts and will tell him everything tomorrow, the good and the bad. But I wasn't expecting what happened next. But you'll have to wait for our next video to find out what happened after I told him. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Hello, I'm George. A few days a week, two high school buddies and I play Fortnite together. I won't lie, we're not the best squad. We land in the least populated areas possible and then spend most of each match levelling forests and hiding under staircases. We've all moved to different colleges around the country now, so these sessions have become a good excuse for us to catch up. On one of our regular evenings, neither of my friends could make it online. So, for the first time in a while, I loaded up the game alone and went into duos. Little did I know, I was about to have a heartwarming experience that would change my perception of social interaction through online games. I was eventually paired with someone called Cam. We played a couple of matches together and did pretty well. Top five, then top three. I guessed from his voice that he was a few years younger than me, but he seemed nice and was a solid teammate, so I plugged in my mic and started a conversation. He was really down to earth. Over the course of the night, we spoke about other games that we liked, TV shows we were watching, things like that. An hour passed, however, and Cam's tone had changed. He became less talkative. A short while later, he asked for some advice. I obliged assuming that his question would be related to Fortnite. To my surprise, as we hid in a basement in Snobby Shores, Cam explained that he was having problems at home. 
His dad had relocated for work, moving him to a new school in a faraway town. He felt out of place, he hadn't made any friends, and his dad was always at work. So he felt as though he had nobody else to talk to. Whilst I hadn't had the exact same experiences as Cam, his problems still resonated with me. When I'd moved from primary to secondary school, I'd ended up somewhere different to my friends and, like Cam, I'd struggled with loneliness. We talked for a while and I shared my own experiences, how I'd learned to join school clubs to meet new people and the importance of keeping in touch with old friends over social media. We spent so long talking that I'd completely forgotten about the game, and I think he had too, as we died to the storm pretty quickly on that round. After, Cam seemed audibly grateful. He was talkative once more, coming up with game plans and telling me about his favourite streamers. When the night eventually came to an end, he thanked me once more, and we exchanged a terse goodbye. I sat alone in my room for a moment and smiled. Looking back, I should have thanked Cam in return. It was my first solo venture into random matchmaking in a long while, and, thanks to him, it had been an enjoyable experience. The night made me reconsider what I had expected from voice chat. Perhaps the couple hundred hours I had sunk into GSGO had accustomed me to conversations that never progressed much beyond incoherent screaming and the occasional GG. But this 